Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, today is a day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to welcome every one of us uh, to this special uh, worship experience. As we give thanks to God uh, for bringing us into the second half uh, of 2020, and we have a confidence that uh, the Word of God has promised us that the end of a thing is better than its beginning. Uh, so we trust that God will see us through and give us a glorious year and in Jesus' name. As we bring a brief exhortation uh, this morning, I, I just want us to uh, spend a minute or two in prayer. Uh, let's bow our heads as we pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for life. We thank you for January, for February, for March, for April, for May, for June. And we thank you for bringing us safely into the month of July. We ask that you accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Father, in this a brief moment, we ask that your word will come forth with your power and that your word will minister life to us. That in your own supernatural way, Lord, you will command victories for the nations of the earth and for every one of us. That no matter what may be raging around us, we will end 2020 victorious in the name of Jesus. Speak to us, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Praise the name of the Lord. So this month as a church, uh, as we always do, we uh, seek God's face uh, for uh, the uh, word for the month or the theme that he would like us to focus on uh, this month. Uh, and this month we're focusing on a theme uh, titled God and God Alone. Uh, so at all our meetings, our, you know, fellowship uh, sessions, we're going to be uh, unpacking God's word and trying to know him more. You know, the Bible says that those who know their God will be strong and they will do exploits. Uh, so we want to learn a bit more about God. And today uh, I bring a, a, a word titled God and God Alone as we uh, begin the study in the month of July. Uh, let's open our Bibles together to Isaiah chapter 40, uh, verse 25 uh, to 26. Isaiah 40, 25 to 26. And I read from the New King James Version. It says, To whom then will you liken me? Or to whom shall I be equal? Says the Holy One. Lift up your eyes on high and see who has created these things. Who brings out their host by number? He calls them all by name. By the greatness of his might and the strength of his power, not one is missing. You know, in times like this, uh, easily the wisest insight that any of us that is paying attention uh, can get uh, is that there is only one God, that God alone is behind um, all our affairs and that he's got the whole world uh, under control. Uh, governments, presidents have no answers. Science has scrambled for the last four, five months or six for answers. Um, millions of U.S. dollars, hundreds of millions of U.S. dollars have been pumped uh, into uh, finding a cure or vaccine uh, for the COVID-19 virus. You know, businesses are struggling. Um, even pastors, uh, men and women of God, who are undeniably uh, God's representatives in their respective uh, assignments uh, have no choice but to be reminded that God alone holds the aces. And I believe that at this time, more than ever before, as we spend time waiting for this storm to blow over completely, and we thank him for what has happened already, uh, I believe that God will have us focus on him and on him alone. You know, in our lives, we must remember that there are things that God alone can do, that man cannot do for us. There are many of us who have looked up to men, uh, looked up to organizations, and some indeed looked up to medicine, uh, looked up to family, looked up to friends. Uh, some have looked, for, looked up to their you know, bank accounts for help. But we are in a time where every one of us must focus and remember that God is God alone. So this morning, I want to share with us uh, three things that God alone can do 
uh, in our lives and how we can profit from those things. You see, God is Jehovah El Shaddai. You know, it's like, you know, saying I am the ocean that never runs dry. But you and I must know how to draw out of that ocean so that we will profit uh, from it. We're going to look at three things that God alone can do. Three things that are distinctly the prerogative of God. Uh, number one, we'll look at the fact that God alone knows the future. You know, there were many prophecies in January 2020. Uh, now we even have prophecies every week. But literally no one has been spot on to say this is exactly what will happen in the future. But we know that God knows the end from the beginning. Number two, we will look at the truth that God alone can promote, that only God can lift us up out of this merry clay. And then lastly, we will look at the revelation that God alone can keep even to the end. So let us start by looking at the truth that God alone, alone knows the future. Why does God know the future? God knows your future, my future, the future of Nigeria, the future of the nations of the earth, because he planned it out from the very beginning. You know, God's word says, known to him are all his creations from the foundations of the earth. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. So in God, our future is already planned out. He is very clear for those who belong to him. Why does God know the future? He knows the future because he created it. In Isaiah 46, verse 9 to 10, Isaiah 46, 9 to 10, he says, remember the former things of old. He says, for I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end even from the very beginning. And from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. You know, that's a very mind-boggling uh, passage in the Bible. Because while COVID-19 and all that is going on may have caught everybody flat-footed, but God is saying in his word that is truth here that I knew. Before the earth was formed, God knew that in 2020, this challenge would come. And you know, as I have waited on him and prayed through this season and sought his face, one of the words of assurance that the Holy Spirit has said to me repeatedly is that he's not confused by all of this, that he knows the difference. He knows what is going on. Nobody is dying or falling ill as a surprise to the Most High God. And the good news is that he has promised that for those who belong to him, the future will be greater than today. So I want you to have that assurance that no matter what the storms that are surround us, no matter how what the statistics may say, no matter how bleak the business environment may look, God's word in Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10 says very clearly, it says, say to the righteous, not to everybody, say to those who have made Jesus Christ their righteousness, it says, say to them, it shall be well with them, say, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. So don't believe what the numbers say. Believe the word of God because, you know, if you focus on the numbers, you will find out that there's confusion. In Romans chapter 8, verse 28, God's word says, For we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. So don't worry about the future because God plan the future. He builds the future from the very beginning. And he has assured us that if you belong to him, your lot is settled for good. Just walk with God alone. You know, it's like when you're going on a journey and you don't know the destination. What wise people do 
is that they stay close to the one who has been on that journey before, the one who knows the road. They don't stay far away from their guide. If you walk with God alone and don't get distracted, he will ensure that you finish 2020 victorious and ensure that even for the rest of your life, you live in victory in the mighty name of Jesus. So God alone knows the future. Number two, God alone can promote. You see, the future is not important if it's not going to lead us into a better tomorrow. If you want to have a better tomorrow, you must keep going higher. Standing on one spot, being paralyzed, is not an option. Because even in spite of all that is going on now, people are moving forward. So some organizations are stuck in fear and, you know, looking for how to cut back. On the other hand, some other organizations, some other businesses, some other ministries are pressing forward, hiring new people, promoting new people, investing, because somehow they know that you've got to press forward. But the good news is that only God knows how to promote. Only God can promote, even when everything is dark. In Psalm 75, verse 5 to 7, Psalm 75, 5 to 7, it says, lift up, lift not up your horn on high. So don't speak with a stiff neck. Don't be arrogant. Say, for promotion comes neither from the east nor from the west, nor from the south. He said, but God is the judge. He puts down one and he sets up another. Only God promotes. So if somebody says, oh, you know, I'm not going to promote you. Your tomorrow is not going to be great. Oh, this COVID-19 is going to kill all of us. Remind them that there is a God who can promote against all opposition. And you know what? Promotion is his specialty. That is part of the things that God is a specialist in. In 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 8 to 9, 1 Samuel 2, 8 to 9, Sam, uh, Hannah, a, a, a woman who had had a delay in childbirth and had been relegated to the background because, you know, she got, her husband got another wife. But then she looked up to the God who promotes and she got the kind of son, the kind of son you should get when you have waited, the Samuel of this world. So in celebration, she sang a song. He said, God raises up the poor out of the dust and lifts up the beggar from the dung hill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. He says, for the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon them. He will keep the feet of his saints and the wicked shall be silent in darkness for by strength shall no man prevail. Why would anybody pick up a beggar and make him a king? Why would anybody pick up a shepherd boy like David and make him a king? Why would anybody pick up a slave boy like Joseph or a slave girl like Esther and promote them into the palace? Simply because that person specializes in picking up those who are low and lifting them up. I'm praying for someone who is listening to this broadcast today that against all odds, by the time 2020 is over, you will look back and this will have been the year of your greatest promotion in the name of Jesus. I am a testimony of that. I have recently been promoted against all odds. And I am praying that that will be your testimony. All you have to do is to meet God's expectations for promotion. And your lifting will be unstoppable, even by COVID-19, in the mighty name of Jesus. So God alone knows the future. God alone can promote. And then, lastly, God alone can keep. You see, when you are not rising in life, you don't really face a lot of oppositions. But the day you decide that I'm, I'm tired of the valley, I want God to take me to the mountaintop, then the devil and his agents 
will not sit as spectators. They will try to stop you. They will try to spoil what God has promised you. But you know, one of the specialties of God that only he can do is that only God can promote. Only God can promote and preserve. And I pray that no matter what may be happening, God will protect you and preserve all that are precious to you during this season in the mighty name of Jesus. In Psalm 127 verse 1, Psalm 127 verse 1, the Bible says, except the Lord builds the house. It says they labor in vain that build it. It says, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wakes but in vain. You know what that means? You can build a fortress around yourself. But except God keeps you, except God watches over you. I mean, who would have thought that an unseen virus, too small to be seen with the human eye, will try to stop the destiny of millions. But I pray that concerning you, you will overcome in Jesus' name. Zechariah chapter 2 verse 5 says that as you increase and you break forth, he said God will build a wall of fire around you and be the glory in the center of your life. I pray that in your life, from this month of July on, because you are entering into a better place, I pray that God will build a wall of fire around you. That no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. Whether they be disease or enemies, you are pressing forward in Jesus' name. But you see, God is not just a defender. He is also the mighty warrior. The Bible calls him the commander of the heavenly hosts. He's the commander of the armies of heaven and earth. When God decides to fight for you, to preserve his destiny in your life, even you will tremble. You know, God called the children of Israel out and said, you know, come and worship me. I have a bigger destiny for you. But Pharaoh and the armies of Egypt decided that they were going to pursue them. And the wall of fire came and protected them. By the time the story was over, those who were pursuing the children of God were drowned in the Red Sea. May I pray for you that from today for the rest of your life, every opposition to your fulfilling God's destiny in your life will drown in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will keep you and all that are yours till the end in Jesus' name. So, let us conclude. How do I enjoy all that God alone can do? How do I enter into this exclusive preserve of God? How do I enter into the future that God has planned for my life? How do I press forward even into the lifting that God has planned for my life? How do I ensure that I don't lose the things that God is releasing into my hands. Just three things and we close. Number one, be faithful to God. Come rain and come shine. You know, we live in a, a season now where, as I was sharing with some of my friends last Sunday, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you are going to walk with him, you've got to be the same yesterday, today, and forever. There are many of us who have become unfaithful to God in different areas of our lives because, oh, you know, maybe you're not going to church regularly. Maybe you are spending so much time on media because, you know, your office has not fully opened. Remember that God did not say that viruses and sickness will last forever. The only one who lives forever is our Lord Jesus Christ. When we are done with this season. Jesus will still be on his throne. Please stay faithful. And even if you have missed your way, or if you have drawn away from him, the Bible says that only God alone can forgive, like anybody, like no man can. In Isaiah 55 verse 7, Isaiah 55 verse 7, it says, let the wicked forsake his way. 
Let the unrighteous man his thoughts. So let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. You can't really expect God, you know, to fight for you if you are in opposition to him. That doesn't make sense. The future that God has planned for greatness are for those who love him and keep his commandments, not those who are unfaithful to him. I pray that if you are listening to this broadcast and you have strayed away from the only one who can promote you, I pray that today you will come back home. I pray that you will seek his face once again because like never before, Times like this are the times when you must stay close to the only one who can keep you. Be faithful to him. Number two, commit your future to him. You know, one of the things that I have learned to do um, out of painful experience, you know, when I was much younger, particularly before I met Jesus Christ, I was convinced that I could control my future. In fact, I used to write pieces, documents, describing what my life would look like. I was certain. <laughs> I thought life was an upward trajectory continually. But I suffered great losses. And then I met Jesus Christ. And he taught me that anything that I give him total control over, he is able to keep. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, 2 Timothy 1.12, Paul the Apostle wrote to Timothy and said, For I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day with a capital D. I want you to begin from today to practice the discipline of committing your day, your week, your month, your year to God's hands. Let go. We have another six months or minus four or five days now before the end of 2020. Anything that you keep in God's hands, he is able to keep. Years ago, there used to be some places in Lagos called, you know, vaults. You know, there used to be one in Yaba called Montgomery vaults. You could go and keep precious things there and they will keep it for you for years. But you see, <laughs> that's a human vault. If somebody decides to breach the security, that's it. But when God keeps, nobody can take out of his hand. And that's why I want to encourage you, particularly on this first Sunday of July 2020, particularly in the face of all the storms around us, particularly in the midst of all the confusion about whether to reopen the economy or not, I want you to use this season to learn and practice how to commit everything into God's hands. The Bible says that he is able, he is faithful to keep whatever you commit unto him unto that day. The Bible says in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Before today is out, go before the Lord and say, Lord, I commit my future into your hands because I know you know the future. And then finally, in conclusion, honor him. You see, if they say that someone is the biggest specialist, for example, in looking after a particular sickness or specialist the consultant or you know, architect, the whole nation can wait for him to arrive. If you do believe that God is the one who holds the future. <laughs> if you believe that he's the one that has kept you from January to July, and you should believe that, then what he deserves is nothing but honor from you. And this is important because God responds to honor. He knows he's the only one who determines the course of our lives. So when he finds that you honor him in your praises, in your worship, in your lifestyle, in the quality of your work, 
in the quality of your relationships, in the quality of your witness, if God discovers that you put him first, oh Lord have mercy, you will experience that word that God spoke that said those who honor me, I will also honor them. But then the reverse is true. When God finds a man or a woman who disdains him, who dishonors him, God has a track record based on his word of dishonoring such people. You know, there was a man of God called Eli who God had promised that him and his family will be priests before God forever. Well, because Eli chose to honor men rather than to honor God. God says, I changed my mind. <laughs> now, when God says he changed his mind, who will you report him to? He said, I'm going to remove the priesthood from your family. God said to Eli, he said, there will be no old people in your family. He said, if anyone manages to live a bit long, they will be beggars for the rest of their lives. Honor God. If God has kept you from January to July, that's enough. Thank him. Dance before him today. Give him praise. Tell the whole world about his goodness. And you know what? Give him worthy thanksgiving. Give him your best offering today. Give him the, the fruit of your lips. In the very confines of your living room, sing a praise song to him. And I guarantee you, because God's word is worthy to be depended on, as the Lord lives, before this year is over, you will see God lifting you higher and higher in the mighty name of Jesus. But the place to start is to commit your life to Jesus. You see, before you can lift someone, the person must surrender themselves to you. When a man is drowning in a swimming pool, if the lifeguard wants to rescue him, if that man is struggling, both himself and the lifeguard are likely to go down. If you want the almighty God to lift you higher spiritually, physically, materially, I am inviting you this morning to say to Lord, the Lord and say, Lord, I want to surrender to you alone. I want to surrender my life to you. I want to give my all to you. And I know that you will receive me. If you are making that decision, I want you to pray along with me now, even as I close the message and we say a word of prayer together. Shall we bow our heads as we pray? Heavenly Father, you are God alone and there is none besides you. We thank you for the integrity and the power in your word. Please accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. It is written in your word that your word does not go forth without fulfilling the purpose for which it is sent. Father, I pray everyone who has heard your word today, I pray that every message in that word will be manifest in their lives in Jesus' name. There be any of us listening to you who is down in the depths, spiritually, physically, mentally, maritally, because you are the great lifter. Father, lift them up in the name of Jesus. Father, if there be anyone who is uncertain about their future, Father, before today is out, speak into their hearts and remind them that you've got the future in your hands. And Lord, keep us unto the uttermost. And Lord, I pray for everyone who is making a decision this morning to give their lives to Jesus Christ so that you can make them what you ordain them to be. Your, your word says that nobody who comes will you turn back for any circumstance. As many as have come today, Father, receive them. Forgive all their sins. Use them for your glory. Fill them with your Holy Spirit like never before. And make them mighty channels of blessing to their world in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Before we close the service, I would like to just pronounce a blessing uh, for the month to all our members uh, and all those who are watching with us today. I'm just going to pray and decree certain things and I want you to say amen wherever you are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this month you will bless your church. 
I pray for every member of New Springs and those who are connected to us one way or the other. Let the gates of July 2020 open unto us wide in Jesus' name. Gates of blessing, gates of victory, gates of dominion in Jesus' name. Wherever you go this month, God will go with you. The favor of the almighty God will overshadow you. God will bless your feet. Wherever you step your feet this month, the Almighty God will give you as a possession. Where there had been no favor, there will be abundance of favor. Where you had failed all year, from this month, begin to succeed in the name of Jesus. Sickness will be far away from your home. Death will be far away from your household. It shall be well with you. And there be any of you sick in your body in one way or the other, receive divine healing now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful month. In Jesus' name, amen.